Patrice um, um, Tinker. Uh, and as you, you can notice, she's a very expressive, very dictive, and a very, what I call, an assertive person. Not aggressive, but assertive. And she said that abuse for a woman is when a woman is not free to express herself or to be herself. I, I really like that. Now, does woman have to learn that? Or that's, you have that or you don't have that? Everything is learned. Explain. Well, from infancy, you learn how to walk, you learn how to talk. So everything is learned. So to become assertive, you have to go out there, search out these things, these skills, read, develop characters, habits that make you who you are. Like everything is learned. How did you learn how to be assertive? Was it natural? Wow. Well, growing up, I didn't really have a mother, so I grew up with a father. So okay, that, that, in the Bahamas, it's the reverse. Yeah, many people grow up without a father. So, what was it like growing up without a mother? I honestly can't say exactly what because my father was there. It was it's five of us, so my father took on five children by himself. So to and me, he that did was the mother six. role as well. Pardon? He did the mother role as well. Did, Oh yeah, okay. I remember plenty of times eating those red rice, which is supposed to be peas and rice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he did try, you know, he, he did the best. He would try to raise five kids on his own, so. What, we, ha what happened to mom? Well, mom, she was sick and um, I honestly don't know, you know. Hmm. I honestly don't know. But um, we made it, and between my father and my two brothers, that's where I got my strong personality from, because I hung with him and my grandmothers. Okay. Both of them are very strong very women. Strong. Were very strong women. But Patrice, growing up, did you ever miss mom? Oh, of course. What was that like, to miss mommy? Well, I, growing up with male as your head, we tend to like, as he would say, get over it. <laughs> so it was like, don't so take on things, right? Don't take things personal. You know, just move on. You know, that's life. So males think that way. Women don't think that way. I will not commit to that statement because my father was the type that does, did not take things on personally. He just moved on. So I'm, well, I, I patented it behind kids, him. And he had the full responsibility. <laughs> right. So oh. I just patented behind him. Okay. Don't worry about other people, okay. what people have to say or think of you. You just do you and be the best you that you can. But isn't the mother responsible for a woman for that girly side and that you Oh, know, I, had two, side? I had two wonderful grandmothers. Oh. I had two wonderful grandmothers. But you said you still missed mummy sometime. No, I miss my Grammys. <laughs> oh, okay. Never wondered why mommy wasn't there? No, that's one of the things I accepted and just moved on. Hmm. It sounds like Patrice. Yep, just move on. You're not going to let me get into that, right? <laughs> not at all. <laughs> Patrice has this wonderful way in the family of knowing exactly where I'm coming from. And <coughs> she could sense it a mile off, and she said, don't go there, Dr. Allen. And just now I felt she was saying, get away. Let's talk about family and my father and my family and leave my mother alone. I had wonderful grandmothers. I got your message. Oh, see, I know he's intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in other words, then, because you had male role models who were protective, caring, then you naturally developed an assertive kind of attitude about your life. Yes, they all supported me. Hmm. Now let me ask you, how do women relate to a very assertive, almost like together woman? Oh dear. Like, are you a girly girl? Like you purr, you know, and <laughs> you know, hi, you know, I mean, are you, are you girly girly or? Honestly, I kind of grew up tomboyish, so okay. I'm more into 
masculine things like you know racing cars you know wow. okay. building things so mm -hmm. um, i look girly but yeah i prefer the but you're pretty feminine i mean you always struck me as very feminine i am feminine but but the girly girly thing purring and as you don't you know not my thing my thing how do women who are like that very feminine hi patricia you know, how, how do that, that how does that affect you well, like I said, I am me, and I try not to allow other people's views or opinions of me unless they are positive. I will take it in. But most times I try not to take in what the way most girly females would look at me. I see. Okay. Now, would you go a step further and say the girly females are more liable to be abused? than the assertive females? No. No, no, no. Explain. Girly females are well-groomed by females. Girly females are well-groomed? By females. Female. Okay. So they're taught how to be assertive. They're taught how to be focused and driven. So they're less likely to be distracted or caught by an abuser because they're tr they, they, were, they were conditioned and they were told the, the traits or the signs to look out for in an individual. Hmm. Right. Okay. That's interesting. So then, what does a woman have to be to be a candidate for abuse? What are Listen, the traits of a woman that will help you to understand, ah, she's a candidate for abuse? Every single female is a candidate for abuse. It Every. doesn't matter your background, it doesn't matter your social status, your financial status. Every single female is a candidate. You mean it can't be prevented? It can be prevented, but you asked who all were candidates. Everyone are candidates. So let me go further then. What does a woman have to do to prevent herself from being liable to abuse? She has to come into herself. She has to know who she is, what she wants, and what she doesn't want. Explain. Explain. Okay. A woman has to be confident in who she is. Her, who she is, an, is an, as an individual should not be validated or have to be validated by another individual. Wow. If you need somebody to tell you you're beautiful, you may lead, put yourself in a position where you can get involved with somebody who's going to tell you you're beautiful, and the minute he tells you you're beautiful, he already has you hooked, and then he can start his emotional abuse on you. You need me to give you the confidence you need to put that little pep in your step. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Yeah, yeah. So it's not right to tell a woman she's beautiful? No, I did not say that. I said if a woman doesn't feel beautiful and she needs a man to tell her that she's beautiful in order to confirm to herself that she's beautiful, that man can play on her emotions. You need me to validate your beauty. If I don't tell you you're beautiful, that means you're not beautiful. So you're saying there are many beautiful women who are beautiful, but don't feel they're beautiful? Exactly. And the reason for that is what? Different things. We all go through different experiences in life, and sometimes what we go through tend to weigh down on us, and we tend to internalize these tragedies, so to speak, and then we start to inflict self-harm. We start hating ourselves and not seeing ourselves for who we truly are. And then we open up ourselves <coughs> to all the negative things that could happen. Patrice, that, that really sounds very sad. For you, you said a woman could be very beautiful, but still believe she's not. Mm -hmm. Boy, that, that's sad. That's why I say it. it all depends on where you are mentally, in your mind. Physically, you're seeing a, a, there's a beautiful person in the mirror, but in that mind, Behind those eyes is one of the ugliest person. Wow. That makes me sad. 
Isn't that sad to you? It is. But how do you tell that person or how do you convince that individual mentally to reshape how they see themselves? I know in your family groups and stuff, you meet people like that. How do you help them to, to realize they are beautiful? Well, I ask them to make a list of things that they like about themselves. Once they make that list, and I said, okay, make a list of the things that you don't like about yourself. And the things that you don't like about yourself, tell me why. And those two lists, the things they like about themselves, and the list of the things they don't like about themselves, helps you to understand... How they think. Wow. Can you give me an example? <clears throat> okay. Um, there was a lady, she thought she was very ugly, and she's far more beautiful than I am. And you're pretty beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. I shouldn't tell you that, though, right? <laughs> like, that's abusive, right? Yes, that Macy Day balloon <laughs> is just hanging right up there. <laughs> okay. okay, she was beautiful, but in the group, she didn't believe she was. Right, and it all had to do with what her ex told her. You mean her husband, boyfriend? Maybe her ex. Right. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not certain whether it was her ex-boyfriend or her ex-husband, but... She took in exactly what he said about her. Right. And she, he, he told her she was not beautiful. No man would want her. She <coughs> was in nothing. Her, her body is this and her body is that. Uh, he made her felt lower than the floor. That's cruel. Yeah. And she believed it. And that's mental abuse. She believed it. Yes, she did. Oh, gosh. That's scary. Yes, yeah, so to the point where she even stopped dating. Too afraid to even, too ashamed to move on. Wow. Patrice, how did you reach her? How did you reach out to her beside the two lists? Well, besides the two lists, we had a talk about her ex, I found out why she weighed in on what he said so much as opposed to what she felt about herself. And after discussing that, we went into details about what she would like for herself, where she would like to be. And then we talked about different programs or different outlets that she can, you know, tap into to regain her confidence. Beautiful. You know, fellow Bahamians, I hope you're listening to Patrice. Um, she's a facilitator of one of our family programs. Notice the wisdom. Notice the training. They all go through a very intensive training program. And you can see how she's handling herself. How, I mean, it's just wonderful for me to see. Without the classic training of psychotherapy or psychiatry, we can train Bahamians who have just, she just has it. And the way she was able to help that lady, who even though she was beautiful, but believed she was not, come to see her beauty. Patrice, what a talent. And thank you for helping so many people. We're gonna take a break and be right back. <laughs> 